These are the ingredients that you can often find in a gelato. Milk, cream and sugar might seem obvious, but then you read the glucose syrup, maltodextrin, dextrose, skim milk powder, locus bing gum, mono and diglycerides of fatty acids. Why are these ingredients in the gelato? What is their function? With this new series of gelato drops, I'm going to explain in short videos and in a simple way what is the function of each of them. Milk is one of the most used ingredients in gelato. And for a good reason, the composition of milk can vary depending on the region and local regulations. But on average, milk contains around 5% of lactose, which is a sugar, then 3 to 4% of proteins and 3-4% of fat. The rest, so almost 90% of milk, is water. And water is very important for gelato because it's what becomes ice crystals giving the texture and feeling we all love. Besides bringing water to gelato, milk is also partly responsible for the dairy flavor that many people like in gelato. Usually cow milk is the most used, but if we want to give a different flavor, we can also use buffalo milk, goat milk, sheep milk, or even camel milk. The flavor of milk from different animals can be very specific, but at the end of the day, they all bring water. Cream, just like milk, is one of the most used ingredients in gelato. Its composition is not very far from milk, but with one major difference, the fat content. Depending on the location and the local regulations, we can find cream with a fat content ranging on average between 20 and 30%. In Italy, for example, cream has most commonly between 35 and 38% of fat. This makes it perfect as a source of fat for our gelato, since the fat coming from dairy has a melting profile that gives a great feeling in the mouth and therefore improves the texture of gelato. Cream clearly brings a dairy flavor to our product, which is generally very well accepted by consumers. Finally, also creams contain some amount of proteins and sugars, and for the rest, water that contributes to the formation of ice crystals. Sucrose is the main sugar used in gelato, and it's what we all know as table sugar. Whether it comes from sugar beets, sugar canes, palms or other plants, it doesn't really matter, because what we are dealing with at the end is just sucrose. There's three main reasons why we use sucrose in gelato. First of all, flavor-wise it gives sweetness, but sucrose is special, because besides giving sweetness it can also increase other flavors, like the ones of fruit, nuts or chocolate. Second. Dissolving in water, it decreases the freezing point, which results in the effect of getting small ice crystals during freezing, which means a smooth texture. Third, being a solid, it regulates the amount of water in our recipe, which is fundamental to control the texture of gelato. Dextrose, which is the commercial name of glucose, is another type of sugar very often used in gelato. Dextrose has two interesting features for gelato. It's less sweet than sucrose, and it's very effective at lowering the freezing point of our mix. These characteristics are very interesting for gelato because we can replace part of the sucrose with a small amount of dextrose to reduce the sweetness, but still decrease the freezing point and even more. This results in the fact that during freezing, when the first ice crystals are formed, we get way smaller ice crystals and this means a smoother texture and a gelato that feels less cold in the mouth. So, in simple words, we use dextrose to reduce the size of ice crystal during the first stages of freezing and with the positive side effect of reducing sweetness of the product. Glucose syrups are a whole category of ingredients that are often used in gelato. They are not just one type of sugar, but they are a mix of many different carbohydrates. They are produced starting from starch and depending on their processing, they can have a different mix of carbohydrates inside. Maltodextrins are also part of this category of products, and in some countries, glucose syrups are not called glucose syrups, but rather corn syrups or tapioca syrups, for example, depending on their origin. Finally, glucose syrups can also be dehydrated and found in form of powder, called dry glucose syrups or dehydrated glucose syrups. But what is their function in gelato? Since they contain a big part of complex carbohydrates, they don't bring much sweetness to the gelato and they don't lower the freezing point very much. However, being closer to starch, they increase the viscosity of the mix, giving body to the texture of gelato and they bind water, impeding the growth of ice crystals during storage. So while dextrose helps in the initial freezing stage of gelato, glucose syrup act in the later stages when the gelato is in storage and keeping it smooth and creamy for longer time. 
Skim milk powder is a very popular ingredient used in modern gelato. It is made from skimmed milk, so milk without fat, which is transformed into powder with one of the three most common processes, drum dry, spray dry or freeze dry. The spray dry method offers the best balance between preserving the flavor and an affordable cost. When we remove water from the skimmed milk, what we have left is mostly lactose, sugar and milk proteins, then in a myron account some mineral salts and some residual fat. The reason why we use skimmed milk and not full fat milk is mostly because without fat the powder doesn't change flavor too quickly while in storage. So by adding skim milk powder to the gelato we are basically adding a sugar, lactose, which has a very low sweetness and it helps with the texture just like the other sugars. And the rest is proteins, that are very useful in regulating the fat and air bubbles balance, finally giving us a smoother and creamier texture. In the past, egg yolks were very common in gelato, but in more recent time the proteins of milk became more used because they don't bring other flavors that are not already present in a milk-based gelato. Egg yolks are a traditional ingredient that today is used in some styles or flavors of gelato. Egg yolks are mostly composed of fat, proteins and water, but they also contain lecithins, which is a natural emulsifier. The proteins and lecithins present in the egg yolk are really interesting for gelato because they dramatically improve the balance between fat and air bubbles, allowing for a gelato that is rich, creamy and with a good amount of air. For these reasons, egg yolks for many years were the main texture improver of most gelato recipes. However, using eggs comes with the side effect of their flavor which can be appreciated or not depending on the habits and personal preferences of consumers. So while they are still very popular in some regions or for some specific flavors, today they are not used anymore as much and they have been replaced by other ingredients like skim milk powder and stabilizers. In gelato we don't only find functional ingredients such as sugars, skim milk powder or egg yolks, but we clearly find also other ingredients that are used to give a specific flavor. I'm talking about vanilla, for example, or pistachio, or chocolate, cocoa powder, fresh fruit, and basically anything that is edible. While the function of these ingredients in gelato is to bring flavor, we always have to remember that they can interact with the other ingredients, and it's very important to know what they are made of to be able to use them in the gelato at best. So keep following Gelato Expert to learn more about all kinds of ingredients and how to use them to create amazing gelato. Stabilizer is a fairly generic word to describe a wide variety of ingredients used in gelato. The word stabilizers comes from the fact that these ingredients are used to increase the stability of a product. And gelato is a highly unstable product for the fact that small temperature changes produce big structural changes like the growth of ice crystals or the loss of air, which have as a consequence the degradation of the texture. Therefore, stabilizers are ingredients that can slow down these changes while minimally affecting the flavor and other characteristics of gelato. Specifically, we use two types of stabilizers, emulsifiers and thickeners, but for more explanation of this, you can keep following Gelato Expert and wait for the release of the new masterclass on stabilizers.